Right. The next one is going to be a quite long um, poem of a, of, a, um, of a journey, really, um, that is going to take you, and if there are Hungarians here, um, you will probably recognize it, or hopefully you will recognize the place. I have described in this poem um, uh, a suburban train station of Budapest, and a lot of things are taking place in the poem at, at the same time. But it's not a, a journey of one particular time, but I'd say it's a journey um, of many, many decades, not only my childhood, but perhaps my parents' childhood or my parents' sort of uh, time of youth, um, as well as a little bit of a journey to the present and the future as well. It's called Notes Between Budapest to Babel. Kalem word, a word with a marginal etymology, a land to cross, perhaps, each meter a range we make, a conquest of a land to construct barriers of a language. But let's call it that for the security born from naming. In a suburban train station of the 11th district, in a loose embrace of tower blocks at the final sigh of tram 49, after the last semicircular bend, a stuttering manifesto of one's elegant utterances regurgitates to a rectangular square with tiny shops like sheds, pigsties, wooden or plastic boxes that function as beer bars, fruit or food stores selling frankfurter sausages and other specialities I cannot define in this language. At a cheap spirit bar, a dog tied to a lamppost, waiting for the intoxicated owner while staring each other out, both wishing to swap to be. Near the ticket office, a peeling yellow building, decorated with pigeon lots all around, steel grey atlases scaffolding a weak structure like solit solitary subject in elliptical sentences such as WC a poshka mögött, the sign says, and a cardboard and I find a toilet behind the post office, wondering if it is really there or if the construction is self-made, scratched with graffiti, perhaps by the cat in the foreground, munching cold meat from a bowl while two men inside are counting coins, nodding at me that I may go on, accepting a 50 for ink coin. No paper, but I wasn't expecting any. The concrete is red like the soil on the border dividing Wales and England thrown away beer cans between the rails, cigarette packets and plastic bottles corroded, narrow, stream meandering, narrow streams meandering in between footsteps on the floor, and I wonder if it is urine, if we are in Ghana, and start counting the endless number of cargo wagons, painted rusty red too, narrowing down into a dot, into the possibility of a full stop at the end of the infinite, empty, carrying nothing, yet they seem to be very heavy. I answered a Miss Diamond call, and a female voice sent me back to my mother's cunt. I put the phone down, blushing and ashamed, looking around to see if anybody could hear it and wait for the train. I journeyed through a hundred kilometer short distance for nearly three hours in the peak of the ignited summer, with a few carriages packed with dogs, teenagers, old people. And I wonder how many breaths can be taken. Sentences uttered within 180 minutes times the number of passengers on the train and remember my friend's reminder that I will smell of train after the journey and indeed, train smell does exist. The amalgam of body smell and breath smell and dog smell and cigarette smell and the smell of rust and iron that creeps on the tongue and up in the palate. Yes, iron, the most dominant of all, turning into an acidic smell of sentences and magnetic conversations of anger and passion I want to smell like that too. Last night I saw her after ten years. Where well, exactly was the last time I saw you? Perhaps in the metro for a few seconds, but we only waved from, uh, them from separate carriages, blurred reflections, mirages of ourselves. Now we talk of politics, and she wants to sit right next to me in the bar, not opposite, and feels proud that we were both born in 76, special babies, special generation, fragile but gifted, if only someone realized, ready to burst into tears both at weddings and funerals, I know, I knew. 
and she laughs hysterically and I notice she stutters and cannot express herself and I remember the book that warned me long ago that we do not own our mother tongue and I start stuttering too and laughing neurotically myself and our stammering turns into a bitter whimper around midnight at the last table of the last bar with the last drink and we skip the children's church group again and sink into underground labyrinth of the 80s. We are in Banana Republic. Do you know what it means to sell your life for a plate of lentils? We say. And I wonder why that woman cursed at me on the phone and she made a mistake. Perhaps that is the reason. When I see you again, bring poems and we will read them out loud. You ask when the taxi stops at 2 a.m. And I go to bed straight away into the one where father thought of death the day before he died. The train that inaudibly rolls into the copper-colored station, not only perfectly quiet but brand new, and I start mourning for the last romanticism of poverty I wanted to indulge in, to surrender to the smell of rust, to these metallic syllables of despair and venom, and instead this train is newly refurbished, and two well-dressed elderly ladies talk quietly without any intense gestures. At least your mother showed some passion last night in her nightgown before we dived into the golden nightlife on the crumbled Art Nova Pesh site. We should feel lucky, she says, that we have parents like her, as our words are strongly built towers and we mean what we say. And I notice she stutters too and weeps when she, rem she remembers the church where we used to assist the priest giggling under an open hanging gown of an angelic hangman during the offertory. And so we leave your mother in eternal euphoria and sadness. And I watch the oxidized station go by slowly, losing to the sound of the fine talk in a cradle of soft sentences. Through the window I spot two storks over the lake, two forgotten orthographic signs I could not longer read, written in the reeds, wings open. And I notice another one and two or three more, the entire country covered with copper-beaked white storks. <laughs>